Alright, so today we're going to talk about rate of change and slope um, and starting the next unit kind of looking at linear equations and their properties and um, and what they do and how they how they work. So to understand linear equations we need to start with just understanding rate of change and slope. So rate of change is the change in the dependent variable divided by the change in the independent variable. So this will make more sense in a second. Um, we have a few different ways to, to find rate of change, right? Typically, we're going to look at rate of change in a graph or an equation, um, but you can use a table to kind of figure, figure that out as well. So they give us this table here that is about the distance of band marches over time, right? So know, is that rate of change constant based on how far they march over however many minutes, right? So one key thing to look at is each time right so one to two right plus one two to three plus one three to four plus one that's important right because that is kind of our independent variable and so it means we're going to divide by one so i don't have to worry about figuring out a rate of change that's going to be dividing by more than one so if i look at i want to know what's the dis what's the difference between 260 and 520 so i'm just going to do 520 minus 260, right? And I would get, there's a 260, that's the difference there, right? I do the same thing here. What's well, 780 minus 520? So you should get 260 again, right? And the same thing again, right? 1040 minus 780, you give me 260 as well. So because all of these are the same, I can say, the rate of change is um, 260, right? Because it's constant. What does that represent, right? Well, it represents the number of feet that the band marches per minute that they're performing, right? So that's just kind of rate of change. Just generally, we're not looking at an equation. We're not looking at a formula, right? Just talking about what is what is changing over time. So when we start looking more at rate of change for graphs and equations, right? This is where we're going to spend most of our time. Is we're looking at what we call the slope, right? So when we talk about slope, it's the same kind of interchangeable as rate of change, but we typically use slope when we're talking about graphs. So slope is kind of what you think about what is the vertical change divided by the horizontal change. Or kind of, if you want to think about it in, uh, in just one word kind of thing, right? We have that rise over run idea that maybe you've heard before. So slopes, when we find them, they can be positive, they can be negative. Um, when you have them on a graph, which we're going to look at first, I can look at and I say, well, I want to find two nice points. Well, they give me nice points here, right? So I'm going to highlight those in red. And so we look at what's my, my vertical change, right? Well, if I go and always remember, read graphs left to right, right? So just like you read a page, read words, whatever you're reading, read left to right. So I'm going to read a graph the same way. So I'm going to start here at this point because that's the furthest point that I have marked on the left. And then I just, really, I'm just going to count, right? So I'm going down one, two, three. So I'm talking about going down. I'm going to kind of label that as a negative three, right? Because I went down, so I'm going to be negative. And then when I do my run part of this, I'm always going to go to the right. All right, so if you look here, I go one, two, three, four. So four. I'm always going to leave that one positive um, because I'm always going to the right. 
So then I just write this as a slope, right? So negative three over four. And there's my slope of that line. So you do the same thing over here, right? They give me two nice points here. Again, I'm gonna start with the point on the furthest to the left. And I'm gonna do that same counting thing, right? Here though, I'm gonna go up one, two. So that's just gonna be a positive two. And again, always going to the right. One, two, three. And so I write that as kind of my fraction slope would be two thirds. So you can always find slope on a graph this way, right? As long as you have nice points that cross at nice even numbers, you can just simply count up or down your rise and then how far right do you go per time. That'll get you your slope every time. Would be, oops. So when we find slope, we can also look at, um, and we spent a lot of time on this, is looking at how do I find it if I don't have a graph, right? If I just have given two points, how can I find my slope? And then, um, you know, without having to graph it and then count and do that, I have a formula that I can use, right? We know this idea of rise over runs, right? Your change in the vertical over your change in the horizontal. So I look at and I say, well, my slope is, can be written as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So it's just the two y values subtracted, the two x values subtracted. Um, here's where you need to be careful. And here's where if I look at these two examples, I want to label my points is x1, y1, and x2, y2, or y2, y1, x2, x1. Um, so I don't mess that up when I plug it back in, right? It's very important that we're using the same point as the first and the same point as the second point. So I'm just going to label these, right? Remember, it's always x, y. So those are my first x and y values. And then I have my second x and y values. That's all that one and two that's kind of written as a subscript is telling us is that, hey, these are my... This is my second y and my first y, my second x and my first x. So now I'm just gonna plug that into the formula, right? Say y2, so I have negative two, minus y1, so minus zero, divided by x2, three minus x1. And now I'm just simplifying, right? So what is negative two minus zero? Well, that would give me negative two, right? Three minus negative one, when I subtract a negative, I'm just really, I'm going to switch that to doing three plus one. So you get negative two fourths. Um, and then you want to just make sure you can, you want to check if you can simplify that fraction, right? So negative two fourths, I know that two is, you know, half of four, so I can say negative one half. And I'm going to leave my slope as a fraction because it's really going to help us moving on when I start graphing these equations, right? It's much easier to do slope if you have kind of the rise over run idea instead of a decimal. So there's my slope, All right? So if we look at another example, All right? Again, I wanna label x1, y1, x2, y2, and then just plug those in, All right? So y2, negative two minus y1 over, or divided by negative two minus a negative two. And so I simplify that, right? Negative two minus one, give me negative three. Negative two minus a negative two, so I'm gonna add there. Negative two plus two would give me zero. Here is where you need to kind of recognize some issues there, right? If you were to plug in divide by zero into your calculator or anything, it's gonna give you undefined, right? Because I can't divide by zero, it's not, it's not allowed. So anytime that you end up with this zero, as your denominator, right? Or your change in x is zero. I'm gonna call this slope undefined. Right, so that's really key that you recognize that that's undefined because I can't divide by zero. Um, negative three over zero is not a slope. So don't leave that as your final answer. All right, so the last thing we'll talk about is just how to recognize types of slope. So remember that we, we're gonna read graphs left to right. So if I look here, right, I have this first one. If I start on the left, I'm going up, right? So up would be a positive slope. So anytime you go up, left, right, positive slope, right? This would be a good check if you graph a line and you're somehow you got a negative slope, but the slope is positive when we start talking about that. It's a good thing to recognize and a good check to have. So if you look here, right, 
left and going down. So I'm gonna have a negative slope. So those two are the easiest ones to see, right? The question becomes what happens when I have a horizontal line, right? So here, if I were to think about my slope, right? If I think about my vertical change, right? If I were to go from, let's just say this point on the graph to this point, right? My vertical change, my top of my fraction would be zero, right? So you're gonna, now I could say that horizontal change was four. I could say it was six. I could say it was whatever I wanted, right? Zero divided by anything is going to be zero, right? So my slope here for any horizontal line is zero, right? So no matter what, if you see a horizontal line, you don't even have to do the slope calculation, right? You know it's zero. A similar thing can be said for vertical line, right? So vertical line, if I think about, if I were to have two points here, right? Here and here, my vertical change, top of the fraction, right? Numerator, doesn't matter. That could have been six. Let's just call that six, right? Divided by my horizontal change, well, I'm not going anywhere, right? So I have zero. So I'm really back to kind of what I looked at up there is that I can't divide by zero. So this one, any vertical line, is going to have an undefined slope.